Welcome back to Dynamic Optimization. Today we're going to be talking about a double inverted pendulum. So I'm going to come here to the uh, content. We can see the pendulum on the right. Now the thing that we can adjust is the cart that and the force on the cart. And what we're trying to do is swing up that double pendulum into the upright position. And we have a final objective. We want to get it to position zero in the end. And we might have other objectives as well, like minimize the amount of force or the amount of energy used in order to be able to do that. So we're going to talk about some of the equations on how we model this double inverted pendulum and also about how to optimize it, how to create a gecko model so that we can have different objectives like once it's in the upright position, be able to translate it over or be able to uh, swing up from uh, the down position. Now this has implications for, uh, you know, for many different types of technologies. It's also a very classic uh, control problem because it's an unstable system and very difficult to control manually. But as you think about it, you also have you know, different types of uh, scooters or other things where uh, you might need to balance the individual. And you could think of them as, uh, you know, the person riding this, this device, this electronic device as a double inverted pendulum where uh, this is their hip and that might be their head. And you're trying to model how you navigate this uh, device and the forces that you put on it to help stabilize the individual and be able to move them forward. So um, let's just go ahead and just review the equations here. Uh, using the Lagrangian, uh, it's a sum of the potential and kinetic energy. Equations of motion for this double inverted pendulum are right here. And we're going to talk about um, how to translate these into code. Now, this is uh, courtesy of Theodore Bounds, uh, who contributed this code and adapted from the code by Everton Collins. So I appreciate the contributions of both of these individuals as they've contributed uh, code uh, so that we can use it and share it with others as well. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to do is import some packages. And we need an animation as part of the matplotlib package. We'll also use the gecko library for performing the dynamic optimization. Now we have a, a model that we can define. If you want to set it to false here, uh, then you can solve it without an internet connection. If you put it to remote equals true, it gives you additional solver options. It solves it in the cloud uh, versus on your local computer. Uh, the next thing we need to do is just to find some constants and some bounds. Okay, so these are a couple bounds down here at the, at the bottom. And then this is our, uh, these are our initial conditions right here. And we're going to change those depending on the scenario that we want to achieve. Now this one is from the down position and the angular velocities and the angles are initially zero. Um, we're also starting from an initial point of zero and then final, uh, final point of zero as well. And then these are the initial angles right here. And we're going to change those later depending on the type of scenario that we're trying to solve. The next thing we need to do is define the time parameter. Now in this case, I'm just going to go from zero to one with 100 samples. Okay, and define my gecko time, m dot time equals t. The next thing we want to do is define the final time as a variable. Now this helps us if we're, we don't know the final time, and we want, might need to stretch or shrink that final time in order to be able to meet that final condition. So this is a variable right here for tf. And we say maybe the lower bound is two and the upper bound is 25 for achieving that maneuver. All right, and then we have a final uh, parameter here. This one is going to be um, 
you know, if I'm beyond within two of the final, then I'm gonna set that to a thousand. Otherwise, it's going to be equal to zeros. So it's zeros everywhere, and then the last two, I set that to a thousand, just to be able to have certain things that happen at the very end. And we'll see what those are, you know, achieving final conditions or other things where I'm gonna multiply this final times some terminal objective, okay? But I only want that active at the very end. All right, now here are some parameters and constants. So these are values that are just fixed at these particular values. Uh, we're, we don't need to adjust them. We just wanna put them in as certain links, mass or length or uh, friction or other things. Okay, so uh, we do have some link friction here. I didn't include that in the equation, but um, you have some cart friction and link friction as well, make it a little bit more realistic. All right, so we have our manipulated variable. This is the force on the cart, and we have a minimum and maximum force, and we're gonna turn it status on, meaning that the optimizer is going to be able to adjust that. Now we have our state variables. We're typically going to have a one equation for every one of these state variables. We have our position and our, our derivative time um, for position, and then also our first angle, our second angle, um, and their derivatives as well. Now we're going to have six of these, so we define this as an array. Those are all variables, and we, we are going to give them, uh, well, there's going to be six of those. Okay, so I'm just going to come back up. Um, here are the different angles, angle one, angle two. You have length one, length two, mass one, and mass two. And then these, um, these segments right here have no mass. Okay, so that's an approximation. Um, isn't going to work well uh, to approximate real systems where those linkages do have mass or wind resistance or other things. The thing that we can adjust, this is our manipulated variable, is the force on that cart. Okay, so let's come down here again. Um, we're going to give some initial values, okay? And uh, there's our initial values where we're initializing these variables and then also setting some lower and upper values. Now, we also define some intermediates. These are H1 through H8. And these intermediates right here just help to simplify the equations. They're solved explicitly uh, during every function evaluation and then substituted in at the appropriate part. Now, it has to compile the model into bytecode and do automatic differentiation to provide uh, um, exact first and second derivatives, and it propagates those derivatives through those intermediate functions. Okay, so here is uh, an M array and a C array as well. Now we've taken those equations and broken them down into these this matrix form. So when we define the equations down here, okay, and we have our M times B, the dot product of those, that it works out to have those three equations here. We have three additional equations here that relate the position, the first angle and the second angle to its derivative value as well. Okay, so we have six equations, six unknowns, um, and then all of these matrices help to define those uh, equations of motion for this double pendulum. Now, we go down here to objective. Now this is where that final parameter comes in, where we're trying to meet a certain objective at the very last, okay? So those are our terminal conditions. And these terminal conditions are that, I'm gonna try to get to x final, x dot final, q one final, q one dot final, q two final, Okay, and I'm just putting a squared objective there. So this is an example of a soft constraint. Instead of saying that it has to reach that, 
it says penalize the difference from reaching that final value okay and so it what it does is even if it can't make it there all the way it's going to do as much as it can to make it there so you're still going to get a feasible solution the solver is going to find a solution although it might not be able to reach that objective okay and then the very final thing we need want to do is minimize the final time as well we'll use uh, mpc mode ip opt solver and then solve it and the rest of this is just going to be uh, visualizing the solution and uh, creating some plots that create that animation. So um, Theodore has done a great job with this. Uh, you can see all of the plot values here and just what it takes to make that animation. Okay, so I'm going to come back here now and uh, just show you what happens when we run this. Okay, so it's going to run it. Uh, IP opt is going to iterate until it finds a solution. And we'll see that it found a solution. And you can see the final objective. And there you can see it uh, found the solution on how to swing up. Now you can see the cart uh, position and the cart velocity here as well as it plans out over about 3.4 seconds or so that it took to be able to swing that up. So it's trying to minimize the final time uh, in order to be able to make that maneuver. Okay, and then let's go here. This is our uh, control input. So you can see that it went to the negative 10 or positive 10 bound. Um, and it, it's, uh, you can see it went from zero to negative 10 and then up to um, positive 10 and then back to negative 10 so it's going about as fast as it can given the constraints on that cart and the amount of force so one way to improve the performance would be to find a stronger motor uh, to be able to go uh, with a higher force okay and you could see uh, let's look at the iterations 146 iterations it says the optimal solution is found so the Krish Kuntucker conditions are satisfied you can see it took about 7.3 seconds to solve, and you can see the final objective there of all the things that you're trying to minimize. Okay, so let me go ahead and just stop this program. And then what we want to do is now, instead of swinging up, we want to do a horizontal shift over. So to do that, we're just going to come in here to the code and change this to start at negative 1.5. And then instead of at pi, we'll start at zero. So we're going to start in the upright position instead. And then we want to make it to 1.5. So those are the only four lines that you needed to change to change the scenario for this. So let's go ahead and re-optimize this and see how it performs. Okay, the optimal solution was actually a lot faster. And you can see now it's going to go from one position negative 1.5 over to positive 1.5 and you can see that it's minimizing the amount of time that it takes to execute that maneuver about 2.4 seconds so instead of 3.4 seconds on the swing up it's able to maneuver over with this uh, double inverted pendulum so uh, looks like a interesting solution here